Good afternoon, YouTube-ers. We are at the boiler. Yeah, here it is, November, I think it might be the 16th. I'm not sure what day it is. I get my clock out of my pocket, but I don't know. Ain't that easy to get to. I've got a lot of work to do to this thing to get it up and running. If you have a outdoor wood boiler, you know there's certain things you got to do and cleaning schedules and all that kind of stuff. And um, Last year I had kind of a, I guess literally meltdown on it. It was a homemade boiler. Um, most of it was done 25, at least 25 years ago. Maybe, maybe longer than that. I, I really don't know. I'd have to try to find some photographs, old photographs of it, which I think I put on a YouTube in past videos. There's what I got. This will be 970 videos. And here's videos of all sorts of nonsense. You know, if you're stopping by and you want to see what kind of nonsense I'm into, you might want to uh, click on the freaking Jeep icon or whatever it is, then hit videos and you will see just about anything you can imagine. Sometimes they're not labeled too good uh, as far as what's going on in the actual video. And I also flutter and flight and go from here to there, here to there, here to there. So this is the outdoor wood boiler I got if you're new here. I have uh, go out and return temperatures on everything. This is, this is the main boiler temperature and after years this thing matched my going out temperature here, which was at there. And so to make things easier for me, years ago I put this aquastat on here. And what that does is when the boiler gets cold, it uh, turns a big light on in the back of the house. I, I've showed that, I think, the big red light. So that lets me know to come out and feed the boiler. So when I get up in the morning or if I'm watching TV at night down in the family room and that light comes on, I know I better get my butt out of the chair and put a stick of wood in this thing. I don't know its actual BT output. I'm guessing somewhere around a million. Um, but last year, this and this is all homemade. Um, and it was redone, I guess, about 10, 12 years ago. Um, put a bigger fact, uh, refractory area or burn wood area in it. There's the air intake. That's what gave me my problem last year. And if you see at the top, there's a little arm there. That opens a butterfly lock on the bottom of a carburetor, if you're familiar with that. But it's, it's a baffle that opens and shut. Well, carbon got in there, or, or actually it was creosote got in there and locked it up at about 25% open, which caused me to overheat last year. When it went to overheat, this is my dump zone. Okay, and the gasket is just about all the way gone on that dump zone. It uh, was leaking, and it doesn't look like it's leaking now. I just cleaned that up uh, yesterday, right after I split the wood, I cleaned that up. But I'm going to go ahead and change these gaskets out. And I've got it so I can valve it off here and valve it off here. And what I'll do is, I don't know if you can see down there, when I put it together, can you see the, um, those are hose bibs, or hose threads on there and so what I can do is just put a hose on there and I'll suck that line out and I'll show you why that was leaking in here when I overheated it um, when it goes too hot this pump here goes on and just dumps heat to the greenhouse and the house couldn't use as much heat and the greenhouse couldn't use as much heat and I went up to about 230 degrees um, did not go to, it was not boiling. I have this ethylene glycol in this, which is antifreeze. So if I don't feel like firing it, I don't really have to. You know, if if something would happen to me, which <laughs> nonsense I do, that's pretty, lo pretty might happen. Um, the, wife, the wife does not put wood in this. So it's uh, strictly me doing that. And I, I keep a, a big array of parts just all parts that I've accumulated over the years. And so I have the gaskets to change that. I have more in here. Just keep them on hand because actually these gaskets seem to go bad anyway from time to time. They changed this design on the taco and they put an O-ring in it and it seems to be a lot better. These can squish out. But anyhow, I didn't, uh, so I gotta pump that out and put it into a container and save it because it's ethylene glycol and that stuff's expensive as crap. Now, back when I got this, you could buy it for about a buck fifty a gallon. This thing took fifty gallons, but I only needed twenty-five gallons. So that was, you know, what, a hundred bucks to fill this thing up with ethylene glycol if my figures are right. It only you no, no, I take that back. I hold 110 gallons. So 110, so I needed 50 gallons. So 50, so yeah, about a hundred bucks to fill this thing up with. And it's the antifreeze that's been in it for 
all, ever since I built it. Ever since I built it. This originally had pipes just running across the ground out to the greenhouse. And this was before PEX was even even a thought in somebody's mind. And um, I ran it through the heavy well casing and it worked good until the mice got a hold of it, which kind of scares me, mice or squirrels. You know, I do have that problem. That was another reason I've been trying to get rid of uh, squirrels. Anyhow, um, so I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna hook the pump up to down there, pump it out, break these here, put new gaskets in there, clean it all up, and that's part of the thing. Then also cleaning is, um, uh, now this, if you're not familiar with this, which I doubt the jar because you aren't going to see that on any, any other outdoor wood boiler, that is a big filtration system. So it keeps that um, uh, antifreeze clean. So if any one of these pumps is running, then the pump that's up there behind that, you probably can't see it does not run but if all these are off then that circulating pump keeps the water turbulating in the boiler and comes down here and goes through that over there and I know I'm not really fishing and I lose a lot of heat because I don't have stuff insulated um, but that's the way it is I had a clean out door down here but I don't like it so I just blocked it off this this is the air box chamber and you I don't know if you can see the bolts on the outside there's uh, about a I don't know, a dozen, 10, 12 bolts on the outside, 3 8 bolts that you take that off and then you got to clean the inside out in there. There's the uh, controller that opens and shuts that, um, uh, the baffle plater for the thing. And right now I'm cleaning out the tubes. This is just something that I do. I, the more you do it, the more efficient it is. Um, I try to do it every, I don't know, three or four, three or four uh, weeks throughout the winter so you, you, you got to clean it about you know once well every three or four weeks so however long you're heating um, I haven't fired this boiler up so I don't know but I got one tube up there that's been clogged up completely for I'm guessing four or five years and I decided that you know I'm doing so many of these other things to it that I'm going to get that out and I have all various tools you know you got brushes I had designed this tool years ago and what it did was it would go in there and cut this is real tapered edge on the inside and then there's a real real sharp edge on the outside and this would cut through that stuff but that was um, a little bit too close tolerances so then I switched and made another one which is this one here but I didn't do the cutouts on it so it doesn't cut uh, that well but to do this what I just put together is I just put this on the end of this pipe it's pressed on there and um, I started here and then there and then there's another another thing here I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute I'll get up on the ladder I'm just slowly drilling it out I don't uh, I don't think that's gonna come out because that was pressed on there let me go out and show you what I got to do in the uh, greenhouse when when it got all that overheated heatedness too hot it seemed to take the o-rings out in the in the and gaskets out of the dump zone on that um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna fix those today or I guess or tomorrow I've been putting with that for the last couple days yesterday after we split that wood um, I came up and worked on that till dinner time and then it was cold and rainy and nasty so I couldn't do anything else so just put on some heavy clothes and just get at it in here this has been a problem for years and years and years can you see them that's how much moisture it's leaked since last year so I think I'm gonna take and in fact you can just see that I don't know if you saw that this line here is dripping so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that uh, 90 out of there when I suck this suck this dry and take this off of here well this one's not leaking so I might leave that I'd be best to take it off I, I got new ones like I said and I'm gonna redo that and make this line a little bit shorter but when this thing heats up these lines come out about 12 inches now to help them slow the movement down I put one of those uh, hose clamp things on there which it's a hydraulic thing to keep your hydraulic lines in check so I put that over there and, and that helped it I put that on there to see if it keep it straight but I see that this line and they're kinked weird 
you can't really see it maybe you can see it they're kink weird so if I get this shorter and pull that up a little maybe that'll take care of that and I won't have a leakage uh, this year but I definitely got to change those gaskets on that on that pump now my pumps don't run all the time most boilers wood stove outdoor wood boilers those pumps run all the time mine only come on on demand so if the thermostat calls for it the pump comes on then I have uh, aquastats hooked to the pipes and say okay now turn the blower on so that that's how mine works um, I don't really know which one's better if you have the pump going all the time I think you'd almost want to because if you were to not fire your boiler it would back feed your back feed your uh, boiler lines and your boiler to keep it from freezing um, knocking stuff down here what was that that's one of my pump inlets I'll probably be looking for that in a little while I gotta go down and get the pump out of the out of the mothballs anyhow that's kind of what it is on the boil oh you didn't look inside I redid the um, refract I always redo the refractory every every year too with a, a special refractory cement if you've never seen inside here I guess I didn't show that oh here's a, a light you can see where I patch the refractory every year um, it's black in the bottom because I just cleaned out the tubes and blew all the I had that perfectly vacuumed down I'm gonna have to vacuum it back out again I just touch up where there's little cracks in there um, just think it's a be better thing to do why get why let those cracks get out of hand and I'll regasket the door man maybe I won't I don't know the gasket here that's that's probably the weakest thing yeah I think I might regasket the door um, that's probably the weakest weakest part of this whole thing because what happens is this is this condensates here and when that when that creosote gets on here you open the door and it pulls these gaskets off so that was kind of a bad design that we had there but it was just the design of the time and didn't really know any better and the door is bigger than it needs to be that that's probably a four foot door where'd my tape go I had a tape here a minute ago oh it's up here are you getting dizzy yet I think it's about a four four foot by 18 and and the the problem is back when I made this it was oh yeah you can put as big a piece in you want in here approximate size that's about it's about four foot can you read upside down I don't know what the actual 14 by 20 so I'm sure it's probably about four by 18 when I made this thing originally the door was only nine by because it was a it's a Spencer boiler um, converted over to to wood I, you can see I can get up there hold on it was a Spencer boiler and it's what they call a return to boiler so the heat heats in the mud legs down there then comes up and goes through these lower section of tubes circles back and goes through the back section of tubes look at all that heating surface area you look at these new boilers that transfer the heat and they got what three four five tubes maybe max so this was a Spencer boiler you can't really read anything on there it, it, I've, I've tried a couple times to, to see if there was a rating on it but never been able to um, so that's what it is. So I'm going to sit back and I'm going to slowly try to drill that, drill that hole out. I'm making a little bit of progress. Uh, what's that creating to me? It's a cold spot in that boiler, and I just don't want that. And um, I got fuel oil in the house, but the fuel oil right now is running seven dollars a gallon. And uh, if you do the calculations, it can add up quick. And I have tons of wood. You know, you, you saw the wood down there. If you're new here, there's uh uh, one, two, three, at least three, three cords there. Then here, this is all backup wood. Here, there's about five cords there. Um, and it's all this is is backup because I put the my wood in big racks and I bring them up here and set them here so there's one step to the boiler. So once I once I take them off the splitter, they go into a rack of some sort and then they go they go to dry and then they come up here so I don't handle it hardly at all um, you, that that's what eats you up in a wood boiler business or wood business I don't know if I can get up that high and I don't know that you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing and it's just a slow 
kind of a slow, goofy progress. I'll zoom in a little bit. I guess you can see it. I'll do it work on a little bit and see how it does. Once I get through the halfway point, um, because that's a cold spot, that's where the condensate's going to want to uh, ride. And I have all sorts of goofy tools here. Just tons of them. Like I said, this is one I just, just made uh, machine to handle. We casted those a long time ago. The machine to handle. And uh, I could put this on a drill, but then I think I might get a little too violent. I don't want to nick, nick the tubes. That's why I'm not doing that. And I just push. And it's just hard crust. But I can't get through it with the other, other tools that I got. It's got to go 32 inches through there. Um, I don't know where I'm at now, but I, it, it doesn't take too long to go through there. I, I might have, I probably have more time making the, making the tool than I do. Uh, now I put a little mark on just, just curiosity. This is, this isn't a, uh, this isn't the how-to or what, except for now I left my ruler down there. Just kind of curious where I'm at, making progress, and then I can see the tool still going in. I don't have, I don't have too much to go. I'm right to there now, so I'm two foot in. Better than two foot in. I got to go to 32 inches. So I think you guys might be here for the breakthrough. I don't know, I thought it was going to be a little easier to get, it seems to hit a, hit a, don't want to go further, well, I don't know, it's going pretty good, I think, we'll put another mark on it just for the, Makes me feel like I'm making progress, you know. It's got to be about all, all the way through. Then there's a big spot in the back that you got to clean out. Well, I'm down to... I probably just wiped it off with my fingers. I think I did. I had another mark on there. I know it was past there, I think. Maybe not. It might have been that mark. Let me see. Yep, it was that mark. Oh, hit some. I guess it was coming in from the other side more than I thought. made it another inch in since the last one is this like watching paint dry I got a lot of paint to watch dry Woo! I'm pushing harder and harder well we'll put another mark on it And maybe I'll get the tape and measure it just for my own. As the tool gets filled up with crud, where's my latest mark? Right here. Hey, let me get my ruler. Like I said, I know the I know the tubes are 32 inches up there. Somebody can figure out the heat transfer if they want, but the PTUs really depends on, on, I think, the fire that's putting in the hole. Let's see here. We are at 29 and a half inches. We're just about there, guys. I guess I'll 
make you watch it all the way through to the end. You think it would blow out the back. Can't have much more to go. Because I can't see my... It might have got wiped out with the blackness. <laughs> Woo! Old man get tired. I didn't have to do this, but on this one, this is the only tube that was... And usually you can just run the rods right through it. Yeah, usually you can just go like this. Well, I'm making a liar. That, well, that other rod that I use. Usually that's about all it takes. There, I made it through. didn't work too bad I got like I said that's been clogged up for about three years this is the um, this is a rod that I usually run through see that and that's about how it usually goes through on them you got to force them a little bit depending on how much creosote And as far as a wire brush, I have one, but I don't use it too often. I got just about every, and I have these, um, these other ones are scrapers. Now my hands are all black from that. Normally I wear gloves, but didn't do that. I have these and I can just, oh, let me zoom you back in. Boop. Bring a spaceship down to earth. I have these and they just don't, they wouldn't cut it because you're, I was hitting something hard in this area here and they wouldn't cut it and they bend up and also that stuff comes out a lot easier when it's warm but then I got to clean this box back here and then I'm really done I could fire it there's an access hole there that you open it up and it rattles so I put that pipe on and wedge it against the thing but um, you got to get in there and clean all that out in there that's where all that crud goes to when you push it through and that's about it um i might fire this beast today uh build a little fire and just let it come off you don't want to go to high fire instantly you know you want to let it warm up and it'll condensate and water will run off of this thing and you'll swear i guess most of the people that have boilers know that when they first fire them up the condensate is just astronomical um now the one thing the one thing I do that creates an overheat that I forgot to say is I save my heat and store my heat in this four inches of refractory cement all the way around in the bottom and the front and um, all the way over. I, you can't see up there, but it tapers into the boiler. So I save my heat as refractory because a fire is warmer than uh, a fire is warmer than uh, can't think of what I'm thinking of or the fire the 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 um, what do you call it? Refractory cement will hold a lot more heat. Water is only going to hold 212 degrees and it's going to steam and going out. So when you when a boiler goes off, you don't get rid of all your bed of coals down there. So that heat, if you got the old style conventional boiler before these gasifiers, that heat would sit there and and still be there. And that's why they have to have such massive amounts of water so it would it, the water would absorb it and and it takes so many BTUs to raise it up and this doesn't take that many BTUs to raise it up because I got all that um, heat transfer up there but like I said this was uh, made backyard junk and I don't have anywhere near the money in this thing that those new boilers new boiler now is, um, like my neighbor just got is twenty thousand dollars and um, I bought that boiler the top part from the 
below the mud leg up. I paid $50 for that thing and converted it all over. Now I still had to buy stack and I still had to get these. I used to buy these at auctions um, when I was working as a boiler mechanic and they'd close down the school and throw all this stuff away. I would just glom onto what I could glom onto. So I don't think any of these were glommed onto from old school stuff though. That was a uh, throw out from a school system and uh, I converted it over. They just don't save stuff like that. Um, so that's, that was, I don't know, bought at a scrapyard. The air blower intake was bought at a scrapyard. I had to buy that piece there. I think that was a couple hundred bucks as I recall. Um, and I had to buy miscellaneous aquastats. So I, you know, I got a few, few bucks into it. I spent, uh, 7,000 on it probably 15 years ago. No, 10 years ago, 10, 11, 12 years ago. I spent, uh, I think 7,000, $7,300 to upgrade this whole, this whole lower section, redo all this and redo all the plumbing and, um, took out the well casing cause I was using well casing and put in PEX cause then they came up with the PEX. Um, so that's, that's kind of the update. So I'm going to go get my pump and suck out that line, make it dry and then do the work, change those, uh, fittings there. I think I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I definitely got to change the gasket. So that's what I'm going to work on next. So I'm going to drain that, drain that line. It's getting windy here too. Wind blows through here. Now I can shut, I have to shut the door. If I shut that door over there, um, it'll slow the wind down so i'm gonna clean i'm gonna wrap this up here up there i'm gonna vacuum it all out i have a big vacuum that was a throw out from a school and i brought it home and went over from top to bottom fixed both motors both motors were screwed up and uh it takes i converted it to running these big filters here and they run um those filters run about ninety dollars and uh, what I did is I bought some filters at an auction for twenty dollars a piece I bought a half a dozen of them but they're twice as long so I had to cut them in half and that's what I was doing I don't know the other day so I'm just kind of messing around so glad you stopped by that's what I'm working on today because it's too I just walked down to get the uh, tripod down at the wood splitting area and it is so gushy down there that you don't want to even get near it so Appreciate you coming along. We'll see you later. Hit the like button, subscribe button. You want to see some more crazy nonsense, hit that bell icon and you'll, you'll see it. And do me a favor, all you new guys out there, send this to a friend that you might be, might be interested in wood or sawmills or boilers or who knows what I'm going to get into next. So um, send it to a friend so maybe the channel will grow a little bit. I'd really appreciate that. Doesn't cost you anything. Or I'll tell you what. Send it to an enemy. That's what I used to always say. Find somebody that, uh, if you didn't like it, send it to an enemy so you can annoy somebody. So, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.